Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here from QBKing77.com here to show off Android 5.0 Lollipop on your Samsung Galaxy S5. Now, shout out to Garwin and rwilco 12 for getting this going for us. Two develop, trusted developers by me, so uh, I can vouch for both of them. Um, they got a leaked build on the Sprint Galaxy S5. This is just a test build, so keep that in mind. There probably will be bugs if you want to flash it. If you do want to flash it, I will link to um, the thread at XDA in the description of the video, but I just want to go ahead and show it off. So I did just flash it myself. I'm going to show you the start screen. If you do want to flash it on your Sprint Galaxy S5 only, then it will wipe your data. So let's get going. I'm going to go ahead and connect to Wi-Fi. You'll see little different icons going on. All right, connected to Wi-Fi. Let's continue. Um, it looks like you have to agree to all the data, all that stuff, or you can actually say no thanks to this guy. Hit next, tap and go. So here's a new feature of Lollipop. Looks like they included that. You can actually tap the back of another device and it's going to allow you to actually transfer data and all that good stuff. Allow Google to check device activity if you accept or deny that. Tap and go. So you just tap the back of the device. I could actually do that on my Nexus 6. I don't have that around, so I'm just going to skip this part. Don't need to um, sign in yet. So I'm not going to add an account or anything like that yet. I'm going to skip this, skip anyway. Add a name to your phone if you'd like to. Notice the different material design, of course, that comes with Android 5.0 Lollipop. And it looks like you can sign into your Samsung account. I'm going to skip that as well. Dropbox account. And it looks like you turn on easy mode as well if you'd like to. I'm just going to finish. Should take us to the home screen. And here we go. So here is uh, Android 5.0 Lollipop on your Galaxy S5. Again, this is a test build. There could be future updates that make it different. Uh, but let's go ahead and do a quick run through. I'm going to show you some of the differences and all that good stuff. And let's check it out. So Connections Optimizer popped up. This is something that uh, is on the Sprint S5 only, so you don't really have to worry. Again, different builds, might, it might be a little bit different, but pulling this down, of course, looks like it looks very similar, unfortunately, in my opinion. I'm not a big fan of TouchWiz lately. Uh, you'll see you do have your quick toggles up here. It looks like it didn't add uh, the flashlight toggle that does come with Lollipop. Let's see if it's in the the full, I guess, option right here. I don't see it anywhere, so it looks like they didn't decide to include the flashlight uh, toggle in the status bar. So let's go ahead and go into settings. Again, like I said, there, this could be updated in the future. It's just a test build, but hopefully... I'm going to switch this to list view from uh, what it was on. Scroll all the way down. I'm going to go to about device. And let's show you guys we are on Lollipop. Android version 5.0 right there. Galaxy S5. This would be, again, like I said, the Sprint Galaxy S5. So if you do want to flash it, that's only for the Sprint. You can quickly tap an Android version. Go to the Easter egg, the Lollipop Easter egg. So there it is. Tap on it, change colors, press and hold on it. If you want to play uh, Android Flappy Bird, you have that option as well. So um, obviously I am running Lollipop, but it's just a test build. So let's go ahead and go home and check out some other things. So again, pull down the notification drawer. You do have uh, no bottom bar, of course, at the bottom. Looks like these uh, little notifications are different. You can swipe them away. Let's go to our lock screen and see if they do show up, and they do. So, But they're up a little higher than they are usually. Usually on the Nexus 6, they're in the middle of the screen. Looks like they're up a little higher on the Galaxy S5. Of course, you can swipe them away. Um, on your lock screen, if you'd like to. Voicemail, you can't swipe away, but if you want to swipe that away, it uh, looks like it hides content, etc. You can clear all. If you tap on it, um, it'll ask you to tap again to open the specific app, so you can tap it, or it looks like you can swipe at the bottom here, and it's going to open that specific, uh, that specific application or notification. Press the power button on the side, and it looks like they did adopt the volume uh, rockers, unfortunately. You have priority, uh, priority interruptions, which you can change the settings, and none, which is essentially silent mode. You can have it for a specific amount of time if you'd like to, or all, of course. Um, so when you use the volume rocker, you only have volume and vibrate. That's your only option when all is selected. If you want it to go on silent, you have to hit none or priority. Now, what's weird is they decided to adopt, um, I guess, Google's volume rockers. However, if you press and hold the power button, you do have power options with airplane mode, restart, and emergency mode. In stock Android, you only have power off, so that's a little different. All right, continuing on, nothing about the launcher seems too different. You'll see the apps, horizontal, 
as usual. Now you can swipe to the left and you get to My Magazine as well. I believe you can turn that off if you pinch in and uh, go to Home Screen Settings. You can turn off My Magazine if you don't like it. Now let's go ahead and check out some of the applications, so some of the stock applications with their material design updates. So here's Messages. Uh, looks like the keyboard's very similar as you can see here. So if I wanted to add a recipient and then, oh, invalid recipient. So let's go ahead and actually add a number and hit hey and hit send and that's what it looks like so you see a little uh i guess contact picture right there let's go ahead and continue on so that would be the messaging application i don't know about uh very many i i would assume settings are very similar i'm sure you could change the bubble color um customizations within the stock samsung apps especially the messaging app is available all right here's the dialer so again there this is samsung's touch with material design update uh, let's go ahead and see if you can swipe through. It looks like you can't swipe through. I don't know why they don't do that. Here's some logs. Of course, you can swipe back and forth still for calls and text messages and contacts. I don't have any at the moment. Um, I guess we can add one. Let's try and add a contact and hit OK. Save contact. OK. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's type in a quick phone number, hit save, and we can take a look at what the contacts are. So there's the contact page, and then, of course, you have your option to scroll through letters of contacts, and uh, it'll show their contact picture if you have one, maybe synced with a Facebook account or Google account, etc. All right, so let's check out the camera application, see if anything's really different about it. Um, right away, I haven't used it yet, but it doesn't seem like there is. You can go ahead and take a picture. Very quick. Very little shutter lag as well. Samsung's always done a pretty good job with their flagship devices and cameras. Let's go ahead and go into settings though. Um, hopefully we get the focus. There we go. So uh, here's the settings. It's essentially about the same. I don't really see anything different about this camera application. It doesn't seem as if they really changed much about it. You can change your mode as well. Beauty face, panorama, shot and more. Manage them and download as well. I don't know if that was on there before. Um, so yeah, that's about it. And you can check out your pictures right here. Tap on that little icon. It'll bring them up where you can share them. All that good stuff. Zoom in, check them out. So that would be the camera application. And of course, not necessarily with the Lollipop update, but you do have all the material design updates to the Google apps, which come out even if you are not on Lollipop, that Google has just been going ahead and doing the material design update. So let's check out the browser, the Samsung browser. It says sign in into your mobile number. I do not want to do that. So let's try uh, google.com, google.com and go. And there it is. So uh, you'll see you have your tabs option. It'll show a bunch of tabs right here. If I want to add another one, I can. So let's go ahead and go to Yahoo and let's check out the tabs. So it'll show the current open tab on the left here and then it'll uh, bring up a list of your tabs that you do have. Um, if you want to swipe them away, you can. If you want to close them out or you can go back to them. This is the stock browser, of course, not the Chrome browser. Now I also want to check out the recent running apps at, uh, button. See how much different it is. New multi-window features as well. I'll show you that in just a second. It says to open applications in split screen view. Um, let's go ahead and you'll see. Here's a list of all the applications that I had opened throughout this video. As you can tell, um, it doesn't feel too smooth. It, it kind of seems a little jittery, at least when I look at it. I don't know about how it looks on the camera, but a little jittery there. You can, of course, swipe those away. If you want to go into a specific application, you can tap on it. And there you go. So go back into it and quickly multitask if I'd like to go back and forth through all these applications. Like I said, you can swipe them away if you don't want to use them. But now let's go ahead and check out the uh, multi-window feature. All right, so checking out the multi-window feature, I'm going to go to the status bar right here and press the multi-window button. I, I believe I can also press and hold the back arrow um, as well. So you'll see it actually showed me that. Here, they, here we go. So I'm going to press and hold the back arrow. It's going to bring up a list of these options. It says press and hold the back key. I already got that. So here we go. Here's a list of, I guess, not necessarily all stock applications, but set amount of applications. If you do want custom ones, you're going to have to root and install potentially a custom ROM, etc. So let's go ahead and check it out. So if I want to go to my calendar, I can click and drag it out of there. Now, if I wanted to open up a multi-window application, I can press and hold, and there we go. So it'll go right there. I have a list of options right here. I can obviously change which one um, has takes up more of the screen space. I can tap, and a couple options happen. I can flip-flop the two apps. 
I can press this guy, and this is move content. So drag and drop a paragraph of text or a screenshot of an image into another window. So I have that option. Let's see what else there is. And expand. So whatever app is specifically opened, I can expand them. So uh, if I want to, I believe uh, it does not have the Galaxy Note 4 feature where you have the little small windows. Unfortunately, I wish they would adopt that with all of their Galaxy phones just because it makes multitasking so much more simple. And it's just a, a honestly just a really great feature. So it looks like the memo app actually got a material design update as well. We can check that out now. I'm going to expand it because I'm in that specific application. So I want to add a memo. I can hit save and there it is. It's saved. I do like this memo. It's very simple, although I do use Google Keep for all my memos just to for all the synchronizations and all that stuff through Google. Just two more apps I wanted to check out. The clock application. If you want to check uh, alarm clock, I can hit agree, I guess. So there's the alarms. If you want to set an alarm, you can go over to your world clock, stopwatch, timer. So not a huge update to this. You'll see the little animations when you press on these little icons up here. It's a little bit different. And then also finally just the calculator real quick, which is another stock application. You already saw the calendar as well. So you see nothing too crazy different there. I guess I can open up the calendar real quick. So there's a calendar, a little material design going on. Tap on this, you go to month and agenda, I can go to a week view, all that good stuff. So there you go. This would be Android 5.0 Lollipop on the Galaxy S5. Let me know what you think. This is, like I said, a test build, so hopefully some things are updated, especially design-wise. I don't like how they use the exact same colors, all that stuff. Um, and, I mean, it just looks all very similar to KitKat. So hopefully they do an update. If not, shame on you, Samsung. You need to uh, fix your touch with for sure. So let me know what you think. If you give it a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. All links will be in the description of the video below. And as always, guys, thank you for watching.